Welcome to Issues at Heart. My name is Daphne Karunge Kangove. Yes, here on Family TV, we have a very, very, very interesting discussion. But remember that Issues at Hand is brought to you by Protea Hotel in Entebbe, the best place for you to go for your wedding, for any kind of reservation. You want to have a nice evening with your family. It is the place to go. You want to chill out, you're tired of your home, your house, and you just want a new environment, go to Protea. You shall get it at very affordable prices well today we have a very very pertinent discussion about the girl child our topic is a girl as a game maker change maker game changer i am telling you you have a girl you are a girl you know of a girl <laughs> you need to be with us throughout this discussion and today's guest is miss julia kengisha legal officer women pro bono initiative well you're welcome thank you yes how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are yeah, you? Yeah, I would want you to uh, say hello to our viewers before we get into all this. Good morning. My mm. name, once again, is Julia yes. Kemigisha. I'm mm. glad to be here to discuss this important topic. Yes. And I hope we can all pick from the discussion. Definitely we will, we will. And uh, you being a legal officer of Women Pro Bono Initiative, what is this initiative? What is pro bono? I know it, but I believe there are so many people out there asking themselves, what does she do? Who are we watching right now? Okay. Yes. So Women's Pro Bono Initiative is an organization that offers free legal services mm -hmm. to women in need. Um, we don't charge the women that we help. We, um, we are approached we are approached by women who need help, especially in legal services. Yes. That's what we focus on. Mm. And also, we only don't do that, but we do um, advocacy. Mm -hmm. We do public interest litigation, mm. like to tackle issues, legal issues mm. that affect women. Mm. And um, basically, it's an organization that is meant to support women mm. in the legal aspect. Oh, well. Well, uh, you know, if you're out there and you have uh, any issue as a girl like me, uh, as a woman, well, there is a place that can represent you free of charge. That is what pro bono means. They do not charge you. They have your best interest at heart. Now, yesterday was International Day for the Girl Child. Yes. And uh, we were celebrating under the theme... Our time is now, our rights, our future. Could you tell us more about it? Um, the International Day of the Girl Child is celebrated every year on mm -hmm. 11th October. Mm. This is a day where we just want to, it's not that we only celebrate girls on this day, we celebrate mm. them throughout the year, but this is the day where I want to remind them that um, you have a voice, you, you deserve to be heard, mm. you're empowered, you can stand. Um, let's leave all the social or cultural aspects that tried, like that put women down in mm. the past. Mm. Let us rise up and make our voices heard. Okay. Uh, do even uh, the girls out there know that there is a day? What does it mean to them? Because um, very many people actually uh, do not know that there is a particular day that is set aside because it hasn't been given a voice that much. So I don't know what the initiative is looking at to see that there is more awareness, that the person knows there is a day just to empower them, to tell them you can and all that. What does it mean to the girl and how do you think they should know better about it? Well, of course, um, not all girls know that this day is there. And mm. of course, um, that is what we are trying to work against. Mm. So, um, first of all, the sensitization happening su um, through such talks. Yes. Yeah, they will be able to spread wide and um, girls will be able to know, oh, I have 11th October mm, mm. As, my, as my day as a girl. Yes. Um, also, um, our initiative in um, reaching out with dif to different organizations, coalitions, then also the advocacy mm. where we um, seek government's help Mm. in spreading this um, this whole notion of girls day mm. and girls rights girls girl empowerment mm. yes well uh, when we talk about uh, this day i understand that actually this is the 10th anniversary is it Yes, uh, worldwide. And uh, we ask ourselves, why the 11th of October? Why did uh, the world choose this day or even Uganda try to jump on and not have a boys' day? Why 11th October? Is there a particular something that happened on this day to a girl that they decided they should make it an international day? 
Um, I think mm. um, it was more of um, we need to get a day mm. where we can put all our focus on spreading girl empowerment. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was particular because um, something exactly mm. happened, but okay. I think it's, um, let us get a special day in a year to celebrate how far we have come. Mm. You know, children's rights have evolved with time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also um, the girl, the girl mm -hmm. child has been trying to be pulled up for, for a good time. Yes. There's a whole history, there's a progress. Mm -hmm. So, of course, as we continue to progress, it's better to uh, demarcate special uh, days or special mm. activities mm. that can focus attention, bring attention to that topic. And keep ringing in our minds as yes, well. Definitely. And then I heard that someone that had that we're going to have this discussion and they were wondering, mm. why not the boy child? <laughs> aren't you segregating? Aren't you uh, discriminating against us as boys? Yes, I understand. Well, mm. that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. um, when, you, when you're trying to, when you're talking about the girl child and boys are like, oh, what about me? <laughs> what not? But yes. we just need to understand where, why did we have to reach this point where mm. we have to speak for them? Mm, because mm, um, mm. they go through so much. You know, from back, um, from our history, yes. women were a bit pushed down, mm, not true. given platforms. It's of late that we actually are given, are given the platform, mm. although it's not well established but we are trying we are trying to pull up a generation agenda that mm. was pushed down for so long mm, so mm. there's a bit of a gap that needs to be filled and, that is and it's not that we do not involve the male child no mm -hmm. we actually want the male child on board uh -huh. to understand that oh um if a girl does this it's okay it's not that hey why is that girl acting like um <laughs> uh -huh. it's an issue why is she um, at times they call them too loud, rebellious, <laughs> for too someone much. who's being assertive. Yes, and yes. Assert being assertive is okay because mm. you're standing up for yourself. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, when you talk about the role of the men in this, uh, what exactly are there like uh, particular places you see they can come and fit in, how they can help with this initiative? Okay. Yes. Yes, they can help so much because... Mm. Um, First of all, by understanding, mm. they'll be able to relate to the issues that are happening. Mm. Um, let me give an example. We had a public school engagement mm. at a secondary school. We're talking about menstrual health and hygiene. Yes. Of course, when they mention that topic, definitely, you expect that we would talk to the girls alone. <laughs> but no, we actually engaged the boys and the were... We wanted them to be part of this. Why? Mm. Um, the whole point of masculinity can be changed into something positive. Mm -hmm. We can have positive masculinity where um, boys are, you are involved and they're actually advocating and take women or mm. girls as their equals. Mm -hmm. um, and they understand the issues that, and they can also help because um, by changing that mentality of these are girls' issues, we shouldn't get involved. Yes. Um, it changes the whole perspective of society. Mm. If we start to look at um, women or girls as equals mm. and change the mindset that they are not supposed to, that they have their own issues and supposed to be involved in some yes, things, yes. Mm. then I think we shall have a better mindset of society to begin to. Um, um, build the whole empowerment and mm. um, Im and advocate for their rights even better. Oh yeah, yes. I believe we can all participate. We need a collective hand in this. Even men that can represent women exactly. actually in pro bono, which and is they're exactly all, and they're all um, involved because yes. we all have they all have sisters. Yes, they're all produced from a mother. They have wives. wives <laughs> and they're going to have they daughters. have friends as well. Exactly, and friends. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when you were talking about the menstrual health and the talk that you had in secondary schools, I am reminded of uh, girls that are usually made fun of in schools, especially when it comes to that time of the exactly. month. And that's how the men usually say, are you in that time of the that month? Time, oh, yeah. there, there's a way they term it as if it's uh, really something that is uncouth and all that. But I'm reminded of how many children or girl children in schools are bullied and laughed at by the male counterparts because maybe they stain their skirt or maybe their moods have changed. So when you were saying that you were involving them in the talk, I could understand exactly. their part in this. We need even the emotional support exactly. from these men even as we go through these issues as women. And now moving to the theme. The theme is our time is now, our rights, our future. 
I want us to break it down. Uh, does this match the cause of the celebration? Why this theme? Our time is now. Our rights, our future. Could we break it down for our viewers? Okay. Um, yes. Well, the theme, of course, relates to the whole notion of mm -hmm. girl empowerment. Um, first of all, our time is now. We, we don't want to wait to work on these issues or to let them escalate. Mm. Yeah, the more we ignore some such things like child marriages. Yes. We ignore the teenage pregnant mothers that are failing that are dropping out of school. Mm. You're killing a whole generation that could have been um managed, that could have been helped and enabled mm. to become powerful people. Mm -hmm. The children that are dropping out, the girls that are dropping out because of the teenage pregnancies, mm. they ha lack facilities, they lack support, they lack understanding. Mm. The child marriages, the girls that are being stopped from going to school but are being taken as young wives. You don't know what you're doing, their mental health, or you don't mm, know how you're ruining mm. their future. That could be our next, you know, prime minister, that could be our next speaker, <laughs> that yes. you're making, um, that you're subjecting to a marriage, and yet she had a whole future ahead of her. So we are telling, we are telling society, our time is now. Mm. Let, us, um, let us fight for our rights now. Let, mm. us, um, let us fight for our future from today. Mm. Every beginning has a step so if mm, we take one mm. step at a time mm. we are eventually going to reach the goal we mm. have a future where girls are in case a girl gets involved in um work like um for example i saw on uh, television mm. they were training girls to be truck drivers <laughs> that is nice and that like, is actually exactly cute. and it had and yeah. the, me the fact that it was made a, a whole issue mm. that oh mm. girls are taking um the jobs of men <laughs> i don't think it should <laughs> no, be no like we are just supporting exactly we are just supporting so the same thing mm. a, a boy can do is the same thing that a girl can do yeah so if a girl if a boy can drive a truck so can a girl if she wants yes yes it's about what they want support their um their dream support their opinion oh yes yes well thank you thank you so much it's really really beautiful and nowadays i am seeing so many women engineers and they're doing really really well you see them climbing up even civil exactly. engineers yeah. and you're like oh my god and you're gonna fall or something and then i realize it all takes uh, the person's resilience and um what the person really thinks they are from the inside and i think that's what you're doing empowering them that this you can do you know uh this is a bit off but <laughs> i'm reminded of a, an interesting story at home we asked a, a man to go up the tree to get uh, some avocados and he said no i will fall and the young girl just went up <laughs> <laughs> So really, it's not about who you are on the outside, but rather how you feel on the inside and what you think you can achieve is what I see in all this. Now, the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development observes that 9 million adolescents make a quarter of the population with two-thirds of these now infected with HIV AIDS. Have you made any interventions? Yes, um, as an organization, mm. um, they were working on um, having a human rights based approach mm -hmm. to HIV related cases. Of course, um, dealing the legal sector, mm. you find that um, as, as, as people who are not infected get mm. involved in have legal cases, mm. so do the people who are infected. Yes. But there's a bit of stigma and bias towards mm. their cases. Either they are, ev they are immediately um, looked at as guilty because they have the disease mm. or um, they are treated in a, in a manner that's not dignifying as a human being because mm. of what um, their status. Mm. So basically, they are, we're advocating for a human rights based approach when mm. dealing with persons living with HIV. Mm. And then also um, advocating for a change in the health sector so that mm. uh, mothers do not transmit this disease Mm -hmm. to the child oh, yeah mm -hmm. you know now that uh, of course with the involvement in medicine mm -hmm. it's now not a it's now not a, um, a problem women can give birth to children who are hiv negative yes. so that you're able mm -hmm. to give them a fresh start mm -hmm. so i think um from the medical services to also sensitization about having a human rights based approach to these mm -hmm. people they are also people that deserve to be treated with dignity yes uh, when you look at the statistics of uh, the adolescents that are being infected uh, what would you mostly attribute it to why are these adolescents uh, 
finding themselves in such a situation? Is it a home setting? Is it um, because, okay, I want to hear from you before I give you what I think. <laughs> okay. Yes. What do you think attributes to this high infection rate? Um, okay, I think um, the society mm. we live in, um, especially rural areas, you mm. know, during COVID, we all had different um, settings. Yes. Some were locked at home in a fence. Mm. Others you're locked at home, but you're in a community. Mm. And at times your parents, some, some of those communities are not um, safe for mm. the children. They're mm. not safe for the girls. And girls are being defiled. Girls are being, um, they're being sexually abused. And this is what leads to the infections. Yes, yes. yes. And also the fact that they lack um, counseling. Mm. They lack guidance where, and also access to services mm. uh, like PEP. If you're defiled, mm. they mm. should they should be uh, they should have an easy access to those th uh, to such services so that they do not um, acquire the what mm. the disease. So um, I think there is so much that needs to be done from sensitization. Yes, yes. From I the health that. services mm. and also I think mindset. Yeah, mm. of community and um, effort where are we putting the effort mm. if mm. we put the effort at trying to stop um, defilement cases you know children are defiled and the cases are are never solved yes or that the, is true. the perpetrators run free without mm. being um, reminded for what they did mm. so I think we need to put more effort from beneath from um, where the problem roots from. Mm. and that is um, Issues like um, the defilement cases, let them be taken seriously. Let mm. the perpetrators be um, charged for what they have done. Let the girls receive access to services like PEP yes. to avoid um, such infections. And let them also get some counseling. Oh, yes. Uh, when you talk about counseling and uh, sensitization, is the initiative directly involved in this or do you work with like other organizations that carry this out? Recently, we saw uh, the First Lady in the Busoga region when she went to reinstate the weight, <laughs> true love weight campaign, which is known before marriage, you know, because we have seen so many students now getting involved in relationships. And I am seeing these as some of them because even uh, the children, most of the children, even boys, are way older than they should be in school. So they come and maybe engage in uh, relationships and then also furthering the spread of the disease. So I am wondering, does the initiative have a particular plan in sustainization when you talk about PEP? Some don't even know what it is. Even adults have no idea, just a few. I, I got an incidence of where a child was defiled and the defiler was able to give her postina to stop pregnancy. But then what about the disease, the infections? So I am um, seeing a need for the initiative to move into these schools like the first lady was doing to really sensitize these people more on this uh, infections and how to avoid them in case they get themselves in issues of course notwithstanding those may use it for their own <laughs> they are not trapped they go where they want and then yes. they go for the pep does the initiative have a way they deal with that or organizations they work hand in hand to do that yes um first of all um yesterday we made a press statement and mm -hmm. it was an initiative to um ask government to push further for the ESC sexual health and reproductive rights. Mm -hmm. So that bill is uh, basically, we, we are looking at it as a way of uh, bringing information, sexual and reproductive health information that mm. is uh, age appropriate. Yes, yes. Yes, we're not saying um, let, th let there be information that is going to mislead the children. No, we yes. want them to know, for example, what you said. Mm. Um, if a child gets defiled, she knows um, there is um, there is something that I can get to stop me from getting an infection. So yes. age-appropriate information can mm. be given to these children. And of course, with the guidance from the parents, from mm. their guardians, or from a health official, yes. they will be able to uh, be more aware about mm. um, the problems that are happening and find solutions. Mm. So um, that bill um, is basically to, like, to improve on the awareness that is mm. going on want them to know more about 
um, the sexual reproductive health rights, their mm. access to the services, not only knowing, but access to those actual services. Yes. And um, then also, of course, the organization also works with other organizations. They have a coalition mm -hmm. where they want to put, they put resources together, they put ideas together. Yes. And um, some of the activities they hold, they attend conferences, strategize, they also do reach outs mm. yeah, to different communities and also um, because social media is trending and it reaches to point um, to areas that we may not be able to reach physically. Mm. Mm. So we believe also in um, um, going through social media, going through talk shows, radio shows, you're able yes. to reach. Um, a large number of people. Wow. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the uh, response. And then we have 25% uh, of teenagers become pregnant at the age of 19 years. Yet Uganda has been ranked highest in mortality rate where 18 mothers die during pregnancy daily. Well, um, my question here is, what has been done about this? When you see so many teenagers, you know, getting pregnant, and yet many die during pregnancy because, of course, uh, there are so many reasons as why pregnant women die, pressure, and all the likes. What has been done to cut this? Uh, of course, teenage pregnancies will be alarming, mm. and um, they may be shunned by society. Yes, and the shunning may even reach when they go to um, get help from medical centers, and mm. they are shunned. Yes, so we're just saying, um, if the issue has already come up, like what happened after COVID, the yes. number that had escalated, I think then um, they should be given access and mm. affordable access to such services. Let teenage mothers not be judged for mm. what has happened to them. Mm. You know, rather we can encourage the rest, mm. you know, to have a better to have a better outcome. But for the ones that are already in a situation, mm. it is better if they are given access and affordable access to health services. Let them not be judged or um, biased because of what has happened to them at a young age. Yes. Some things are out of our control. Mm. But um, they should be um, helped um, mm. medically yes. at service centers of, and also of different the local communities, of course, because yes. most of these issues come up in the rural areas. Mm. So the rural areas, um, there's a lot to be done with their mindset. Yes. To be able to take, since when a situation has happened, you have to handle it as it is. Yes. So let them guide these girls. And also, mm. of course... Um, our families and our yeah, parents one. have a big role to play. <laughs> that one. That our one. families and yes. parents have a big role to play. Mm. Let them guide their children. And mm. you know this all stems from, again, the information. Yes. Now, like that campaign of True Love Waits mm. or um, when they are encouraging girls to stay in school. Yes. You're encouraging them on the right thing. So you need to tell them this is what is there in the world. Yeah. But, but this is try what to be careful do. and mm. try to avoid this. Now, for those that it happened to, as we saw after COVID, yes, um, we need to help them to have access to mm. these services. Yes, and also um, government needs to um, do well in the decentralization of medical services in mm. rural areas, mm. Mm. and also they shouldn't just stop at the services. But these girls also need um, mental mental help, like access to mental health services because yes. it disrupts you from the normal course of your life so yes. you need to be prepared what comes ahead mm. and what um how you can move on can i go back to school yes after yes. this mm. um can i continue to pursue my dreams after what has happened mm. it's all possible mm. but it de uh, depends on the approach how are we going to react towards this the whole situation, the whole situation. Yes. yes when you spoke of uh, parental involvement is where i wanted to head because um most of the pregnancies i have witnessed where a child gets pregnant and they're still in a parent's home usually the mothers tell you go to your husband you know and then they're pushing out this girl probably to a person that she doesn't even know is responsible or if they know the person maybe they're not even able to support the pregnancy how can you uh, deal with that as the initiative do you have a program where these parents can be reached as you're helping the girl so they are able to assimilate well with the girl and know how to help us through yes um here you can involve them mm. in the different talks or outreaches that you do mm. you can involve them and 
put them part of the conversation mm. um help them understand where the situation is at but also help them acknowledge the fact that not all hope is lost yes this yes. has happened but this girl still has a future mm. she can still go to school and be we we see this a lot i'm not going yeah. to uh, okay <laughs> let me go a bit outside um, the facts and go to a bit of fiction yes you see so many <laughs> you see a movie Science fiction <laughs> you see a movie where the girl got pregnant yes but um she was helped by her parents she mm. was um, encouraged to continue mm. push pursuing what she wanted to pursue yes. and eventually she comes up mm. they come up into responsible women that's what we're talking about um mm. our time is now yes let them know that they have a future our mm. rights are future they have a future they have a right to mm. access the medical services that are appropriate for them mm. and they have a right to look forward to a better future mm. yes well i i love the fact that before we got into addressing those that are pregnant you spoke of the role of a parent in how to raise their child to tell them what is actually happening in the world but how they should conduct themselves as the scriptures say of train up a child in the way they should go that when they grow up they shall not depart so you know that when you play your part at least you shall have been able to deal with it in future but like uh, she is saying when the thing comes or it so happens that your child gets pregnant it's important to know that all hope is not lost and do not dis <laughs> don't, don't send away your child no just speak to your child all hope is not lost and look towards the future oh thank you so much and then uh, when we get into the talk of lockdown you kept referring to it a recent lockdown greatly affected the girl child especially in the villages in the rural areas and i asked myself have you managed to reach out many were not able to go back to school many totally lost their lives like i said many um got involved with men uh, some started working where we see child labor and it mostly affects the women the girls uh, have you reached out have you been able as an initiative yes mm. they did reach out mm. yeah the women's Rubona initiative did reach out mm. they first of all um, um discussed they tackled the issue of um asking government to get involved in the whole teenage pregnancy teenage pregnant mothers school dropout mm, that, mm. listen these girls are pregnant yes mm. but can they go back to school can they um get a chance at, at education and this was actually worked upon mm. of course it was not a single effort again like i said we work as a um we work with different organizations yes we work in different ways in order mm. to all have a collective effort so of course um they um tackle the issue of the teenage dropouts mm. from school that after these mothers are done giving birth um let them have a conducive environment to welcome them back to school mm. then also um getting involved in um advocacy mm -hmm. yeah advocacy um fighting for their rights saying these girls still have a right to education they have mm. a right to access to health services and um also public interest litigation yes yeah that is um where they um probe government to readdress issues that have been happening legally of course yes yes so um those are the initiatives that they took on mm. to tackle that issue that happened well that was bringing me to the question of uh yes uh when you say the litigation i remember that that is mainly to do with the legal issues you know the girl is faced with many challenges uh, economic uh, social and when you talk about even psychological so i am um, i am glad to know that you are doing a wholesome kind of <laughs> yes. the initiative is not only to do with the legal side yes. you represent them but you also look at the other areas yes uh, as in uh, what you usually do when it comes to empowering them economically are there like plans that are set forward by the initiative like you say the partners you work with do they look at that side and then also do you have like a team of counselors to deal with that psychological bit of it oh well um financially or economically yes. i could say um the fact that um we do not we give free services yes all these things that um all the activities that we get engaged in mm. we are not um trying to charge them or mm. we are not asking them for anything in return mm. we basically just want to be there for them 
Mm. Um, that is the whole pro bono part, and mm. um, also the fact that they go into the litigation, the advocacy, mm. um, fighting for these rights, having organizing talk shows, organizing outreach programs. Mm. All that is not is not um, asking them for any way for anything in return. It's yes. uh, more of we are standing for them, we are fighting for them, mm. and we do it without expecting anything in return. Yes. Rather, positive outcomes for what? Uh, our cause. Mm. Yes. So I, I was asking if uh, there are other organizations that help you at least to see that they have what to eat, <laughs> what to put on, especially those that were heavily hit by the COVID. Yes, there are other organizations. I may not know them mm. exactly by name. No, you don't but need I to know that um, we work closely with Sehad. Mm. Yes, we work closely with Sehad. Then also mm. we get... In, um, we, in 2021, the organization got um, involved in the Girls Not, Girls Not Brides Summit. Mm. It was mm. also mm. tackling child marriages. That yes. These girls are not brides. They are mm. actually girls that deserve to have their whole future ahead of them. Yes. So um, basically it is that kind of initiative. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about uh, early marriages or girl marriages, definitely we have seen a lot happening, so many given away because they cannot be educated or because they cannot take care of them when it comes to feeding them and all. Since the initiative to go, have you seen a decline? What is it like? What is the curve? Do we see some change in the early marriages? Yes, definitely there is a change, although mm. not um, where it, we would want it to be, mm. but there is a change because now um, you find that now the parents are doing it in secret. <laughs> it's, no <laughs> longer, it's no longer how mm. it used to be, so no more that ah, after my girl is done with senior four, mm. that's even if they are They've lucky. already figured Primary out Primary seven, as, m as mm. girls, as early as when they start their menstruation, mm. now the parents start looking for a way to marry them off. But that was, mm. and it's all the mindset or mm. Mm. that whole, um, um, the whole chauvinism. Mm, mm. of the girl is meant for marriage yes. and she's not seen as anything more mm. so that is um, definitely there is an improvement now they mm. do it in secret and there is a bit of um, there is a bit of fear in what they are doing because yes. also the law has helped mm. the law has helped but of course there is much more to do mm, about mm. it Yeah, and it's I think the most effort will be put in um, the sensitization. Yes. The people in rural areas need to be sensitized. They mm. need to be, they need to be um, educated that these girls actually have a right to a better future. They oh, have yes. a right to pursue their education. Mm. They are not only meant to be in homes, to work. Of course, mm. um, they can do that work. It's normal. It's mm. their chores. They're normal. Mm. And but we are not saying that's not that's not all they stand for. That's not all they have to offer this world. Mm. And you see, um, you can see that um, the women that are given the platforms actually rise. Mm. They do so well. And I don't know if it poses a threat <laughs> to society that they want to continue to men. push them down. But you see, women when given a platform, yes. they 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 really speak volume. Yeah, they do shine. They do so well. Mm. Um, you can see in power. I really mm. admire Jennifer Msisi and what she did. Yes, yes. In um, Kampala, mm, mm. and you see, they they are so strong and they fight for what they stand for, what they believe in, mm. and. If those women can do that because they have that platform, what about the rest who are being denied that platform? Mm. I believe there is so much to explore. Mm. They have so many talents to be tapped into and they deserve that platform. Definitely. Well, uh, briefly, I'm going to ask you if uh, there is anything you do for children in street situation. You know, when uh, recently KCCA told us they're not called street kids, they're called kids in street situation. So you find very many that are pregnant or they have children and they're seated by the roadsides and most of them are wrapped. You don't even know others are defiled. Is there anything you do uh, for those ones as well? Uh, particularly mm. um, to deal with them directly, no. Mm. We, we and we believe um, that here we have to actually work with government. Yes. Yes, because um, as an initiative, you may not may not be able to do as much as mm. 
you may not be able to have a great impact because if we decide to help the ones here mm. on let us say this street yes. then what about the rest that are on the other side of the country mm. or that are in areas that you cannot reach what will happen mm. so if government can maybe improve on the on the initiative whether through the laws whether through enforcement of the laws that they put in place mm. um, also ensuring child protective services mm. child protective services where these children can be taken and um, nurtured and raised yes then i you because you know abroad they have a system where mm -hmm. the children who are let us say maybe orphaned or left astray they are taken into homes mm -hmm. yes and are raised and at least they give them a bit of a sense of belonging so yes. um we should put more initiative in that Mm. In that aspect of um, creating, um, creating a system where these children can be all nurtured, can be kept until yes. maybe um, they can develop some skills. They can be taught in those places. Mm. Yeah, like we see, there are so many orphanages that are doing so much good work. Mm, yes. Yeah, they are taking in these children, and you see the 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 children that whose lives have whose um lives have gone through such a system yes. they come out as well oh yes they yeah. do they, they come do. out once um they are given that opportunity mm. so i think that's where the effort can be put well thank you thank you so much for you that has just joined us you're still watching issues at hand here on family tv and today we are with miss julia ken gishel the legal officer women pro bono initiative your daughter could make change your wife could make change and even that friend or sister you look down on <laughs> we are here with miss julia ken gishel telling us a lot about the girl child and what she can and do in this world and the region at large well we're getting into uh, violations of a girl child i want to know what are the violations against a child someone could be doing it and not knowing that it is wrong <laughs> um the violations against the girl child yes. are quite many we have um the the sexual violations defilement molestation mm. um we have the child marriages mm. We have child abuse, um, it can be physical, it can mm. be mental, yes. the corporal punishments. Um, we also have, well, um, the, girl, the violations, you can tell from the, their rights. You, you mm -hmm. get. Once mm. their rights are violated, it becomes a violation, a violation against definitely. the <laughs> So, yes. first of all... So, um, should we look at the rights then? Yeah, yes. I think we can mm -hmm. begin from the rights. Yes. So generally the rights of a child mm. stem from the convention um, on the rights of a child yes that is what brought the conversation of children and not just property of their parents mm. they are human mm. beings that also have an opinion oh, so yes. it gave a platform for children to have an opinion mm. and um, when it was ratified in uganda in 1990 mm -hmm. that is when um, it paved way for the coming of the children's act Mm. and uh, eventually the Children's Amendment Act. Mm. So these, um, these, the Children's Act spelled out, spelled out the rights of a child as the basic needs, that is health, education, food, mm. um, they have a, a right sense of belonging, yes. and all that. Mm. Um, of course it was amended to include um, also identification, they have a right to be to have a sense of identity. Yes. Who am I and mm, who do mm. I belong to? Where do I belong? Mm, mm. They also have a right for their opinions to be heard and that's what gave the whole notion of the best interest of a child. Yes. For example, in these um, cases of, um, let us say, um, adoption cases mm. or guardianship cases, um, they consider the opinion of the child. What is what is the best interest of the interest of this child? Yes. Where best would they fit? What best works for them? Mm. Then also, um, of course, the whole issue of identification, the fact that um, there's a large percentage of undocumented births. Mm. Mm. Yes. Um, and so that leaves a whole uh, crisis, identity crisis. Yes. The child grows up without um, knowing um, where they're from or who they belong to. And also, mm. it also, um, as if 
opens a way an easy way for child trafficking yes that's if this true. child is not on record then they it you is never less know. like that they will mm. ever know that this child went missing so yes. of, of course also among the violations we have child trafficking yes. children are are taken as sexual slaves they're mm. taken as work slaves that or there's also child labor yes they are overworked at such a young age no child deserves to do that kind of work in mines mm. in mm. um also as house girls yes. or house boys mm. but since you're talking about the girl child yeah the sexual slavery yes. they are taken into they are trafficked and taken into prostitution the children are made to do all kind of obscene things mm. and their mm. innocence is taken away from them at such a young age mm. so all that is happening yeah there's so much um, abuse of their rights mm. and i think it, it's because maybe most people don't even know what their rights are yes Yes, children also have rights. They yeah, also they have do. a right to legal representation. Yes. Also in um court cases they can also give their opinion. Mm-hmm. Of course there's a parameter <laughs> in which it is accepted. Yes. But still they have a platform. Mm. And if they know if they maybe they knew their rights, mm. then it would be easier for them to be enforced or to be realized mm. and to be worked upon. And that is true. So the violations stem from the abuse of uh, the abuse of these rights. Mm. Yes. And when it comes to violation, it brings me to the next question, which is gender-based violence. We have seen it uh, come on the rise, and there is a lot happening. I don't know if there are any plans that the initiative has to curb it or what they are already doing about it. Well, they are doing so many things, but let mm. me just talk about a few. Yes. Um, for example, in legal cases, there are mm. women that are facing um, issues of violation. Mm. So we represent them. We represent them and take on their case mm. and ensure that it reaches and it, it yields like what they deserve. They mm. deserve justice. And that is what we intend to give them at the end of the day. Yes. Then, of course, also um, there was um, after COVID, Mm. or during that period um we had um a hotline a free line where okay. we, they would reach out and they were taken to safe houses those that were being abused mm. those that were being maybe beaten yes. they were taken to places of safety mm. and um also of course again like we talked about we have been talking about the whole show the advocacy yes, the yes. sensitization does society know the issue that is happening and why is it happening Mm. Um, is it because women are not are being stepped on, mm. they're not being uh, empowered, or is it the masculinity that needs a change mm. to being positive, to being accommodative of the girl child and women? Oh, yes. Uh, Well, we have uh, questions coming in from our viewers right here. I want to start off with this one. Thank you so much for the show. Um, Actually, Sibiar Hanga, why do you always front the girls? Is there any initiative to empower the boy child? Because a boy is not nurtured. I think he was saying if a boy is not nurtured, it will always create insecurity to the girl a child. When do we celebrate the boys? (laughs) <laughs> like you said when we were starting off yes, they will always like complain say, they will always say but again it's yes. let us um, it's like if we are speaking about an issue of yours and I'm like oh what about my issue yes. so when we are speaking about the girls it's not to say that the boys do not exist no they mm. do, they do exist and we acknowledge that mm. but we are trying to say that from where we have come from it has always been, there's always been a gap Mm. The boy, the boy child, will always be given a platform first. Mm. Inheritance, the boys aren't supposed to get everything. Mm. Um, in um, jobs, they prefer the males because apparently they have a better work mm. ethic. Mm. But <laughs> so they think. <laughs> girls and are what are a bit vulnerable or what? Yes. But we are not saying the boy child does not deserve a platform. They mm. do deserve a platform and they have it mm. but we are saying what about and and the fact that we're talking about the girl child day um. let us focus on the girl child let us focus on the girl <laughs> that has been there for such a long time yes it's um it's as it's uh. as just a sharing platform it's an equal opportunity mm. are we on the same table let us be fair and let us be truthful to ourselves mm. girls are not given the fair 
platform, the eco platform. Mm. There is this whole thing of girls are now in leadership, look at the prime minister, look yeah. at the speaker. Mm. But those are just, let us, if we compare all the, the employment platforms in the country, yes. are we going to say that mm. the women are in the lead? I don't think and so. And if they're in the lead, they actually <laughs> have the power mm. that is mm. being talked about. Oh, yes. Yes, there is that whole thing of let us put them in because uh, women deserve, want a platform these Just days. for sure. Just for sure, for <laughs> optics. Yes. But are they actually being given that power? Are mm. they actually are being they exercising given, it? Are they exercising their power yes. as the mm. head of that organization? Mm. But that's another topic oh, for yes. another day. Oh, well, uh, for me to answer, Ashley, <laughs> if we have a girl's day, that means the rest of boys' days, isn't it? Anyways, <laughs> I have someone here saying, hello, Daphne. Yesterday on Family TV, we watched the news of a chairman who raped a girl in Kisoro. What are you doing in such circumstances? How can, how can that girl be helped? I feel bad when such dubious acts in our country are being done. And this is Jane Kugonza from Enteve. Okay. Yeah, uh, th there was a story in the news of a girl who was raped in Kisoro by hmm, the chairman. So they were asking, how would you help in such a circumstance? How will this girl be helped? Um, the girl can report this issue. Of course, there's also so much politics are, are involved because mm. if um, at times the leaders and I'm not being, I'm not pointing to anyone in, in, in particular, yes. but at times the people, the leaders of the community are actually the perpetrators. Mm. And that is where the issue comes in and maybe um, they are scared to push this issue further. Yes. But like I said, um, the cases that we handle of these women that are suffering yeah. come from as far as in Fiji, mm. um, they come from really far places, mm. but um, we are able to represent them if we open up a case for her, mm. a case can be opened for her, and we can be able to help her through that to make sure she gets justice for what happened to her. And mm. I'm, I don't know how far they have reached to enabling her get access to services, mm. health services for mm. what she went mm. through because she mm. also needs that kind of help. Yes, yes. Yes, to treat her for what maybe went wrong or... Mm. And also, does she have a family that is willing to work hard in hand mm. with any organization that will reach out in order to ensure that she gets just at the end of the day. Well, thank you so much. I think, uh, Jen, you've been answered right there. Thank you so much for watching, even your Achilles. Well, I have another one here you know, saying thank you so much for the show. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. Uh, have, you have really done a lot to empower girls. Have you really done enough to empower girls when the number of prostitutes are raising every day now this is a uh, chiseka lawrence watching from tweed towers he's saying have you really empowered girls maybe the question should be enough <laughs> because yes those who are empowered are there so yes i think his question should be enough because the number of prostitutes is raising every day so he says uh, first of all, um, one man cannot change the world alone. Mm. Like I said, collective effort. Yes. If um, I'm talking about the girl child, but someone else is thinking, why? What about the, boy the boys? Child? Yes. So we are putting divide. Our, we are dividing our attention to issues that do not matter, and we are mm. failing to come together to work on one issue mm. that could actually make an impact. And prostitution. What is actually causing prostitution? What is forcing these girls to go down that path mm. the fact that um some of them have, have maybe given up on life yes they do not have um the girls have, that have dropped out mm. now they are looking how am i going to survive yes how am i going to um feign for myself some of them are orphans so it's not about judging oh this girl went into prostitution mm. what if we solve the underlying issues mm. perhaps she dropped out after a pregnancy she's mm. trying to find a way to support herself and maybe the child and mm. i'm not justifying the topic at all yes i'm not justifying at all i'm just saying there's no need for judgment when yes. we can work together collectively yes. and solve the underlying issues that are pushing girls to that extent mm. and of course um the organization um the organization has done 
and is doing its part yes but what is society doing is society exactly. listening to yes. us when we mm. go when we talk about such issues mm. when we advocate for these issues yes and um of course there's so much more to be done mm. and we are willing to do as much as we can yes but collectively we need to work together yes and also we need to work on the underlying issues that are causing such things mm. happen. well uh also partly answer him uh i remember when you started when you say that the boys have a part to play in this when it comes to prostitution even men have a part to play in this you know yeah. someone once say that you cannot open shop unless you have someone to buy but exactly. so uh <laughs> so and, and the people that are buying these yes. women mm. and are men yes so, that's what i'm saying they so have why, a part why aren't the men saying no mm. we do not want the girls on the streets yes. we're not going to give in we're not going to accept this yes and we're not going to accept this to happen mm. so if they don't have where to go mm. they will it won't definitely they won't be it. there so uh, there is a lot that we could engage so into yeah. yes right now but i would like to thank you thank you thank you so much but from our talk i can see that the initiative has some positive results since it started okay. and i definitely i know you face lots of challenges as well when it comes to doing this and knowing that you're doing it free of charge we may not have the time to go into all that but i would like to say thank you so much miss julia kevin gisha and thank you so much much our beloved viewers it was issues at hand with me daphne karungi kangave brought to you by protea hotel and tebe do make time to go visit